one. Hello, good afternoon, and welcome to New Forest Morphs. I'm here today with Luca, and with Amy, and with Adam. So we've got Amy over here, and we've got Luca over here, and behind the camera we've got Adam. So there we go. So welcome to New Forest Morphs. You guys came here last week. And let's just give you an update. This is the new family I was referring to last week's video who are getting into breeding for the first time. They have had experience with ball pythons before. Amy, tell us a little bit about what you've experienced so far with your ball pythons. Um, well, I've had a fair few ball pythons, but unfortunately it's just one of those things. Uh, unfortunately, all of them have passed away. Okay. Um, but I never got into the breeding side of it because I didn't know how to do it. Okay. But, you know, with he's grown up with me sitting on a snake on my lap watching TV, you oh, know. What kind of snakes do you keep? What's your... Uh, ball pythons, so. Ball pythons, so. I have had corn snakes as well. Fantastic, have you had anything bigger than that at all? Or? I've had a boa. And a boa too, yeah. so you know how to handle big snakes then? Well, the boa was very bitey, so I'm used to being bitten, look at it that way. <laughs> okay, well you will get, uh, you're fine with the ball pythons, as you know, they, they give you the occasional little bit of bite, but it's nothing major. Uh, I think in five, six years I've only been bitten four times, Luca, and three were my fault because the babies just gave me a pinprick and I've been hit by a big adult, which did have a little bit more of a punch, but it was my fault. <laughs> so these things do happen. So it's lovely to have this family with us. Um, they've got a snake last week called Cornelius, and how is he settling in? He is settling in very well. He's just gone into his new rub that we set up. So okay. we set up the racks, built the racks. Okay. Do He's you just have your gone phone into his new because maybe you can just share with us some pictures of Cornelius and uh, the rub system that you've built, and maybe you could explain what you've been doing there. So I think what we're doing here is we are um, basically New Frost Morphs is going to support and, and help this family get into the breeding side. And the way we're doing this is by showing them our facility, showing them how we've set things up. They can take inspiration from what we're doing, and I think you have. Yeah. Let's show that to camera. So this is what you've built. So Amy, can you just talk through what you've done here? so we essentially tried to we measured the tubs uh how much size and space because we've left a little gap as well so what you said about the gap yeah, but small, it's not too big small gap yeah yeah so yeah. it's about two three mil with that yeah perfect. just so yeah um and then we just went and got the woodcut yeah and then it was just a case of playing jungle with it to okay. make sure that it fit and, <laughs> <laughs> and does it all fit okay yeah and what system have you gone for there because obviously uh, we've got five in that one yeah and then we've built another one which has got two in it Fantastic. Um, it's not as fancy as obviously having the uh, things well, no. built in, but we've got the thermostats, we've got the heat mats. Wonderful. And you know, this is how Jad and I started off. I mean, we've got here some of our original rubs and tubs that we built from scratch over here. And if Adam wants to pop over and have a look at them, you can see the Jad built those. Uh, very similar to what you've done. You went down to being a few problems with the pump. We put them together, sweet together. And we got the boxes from really useful boxes. And did you bring them to We got them from BNM. BNM? Yeah, because on the path we've got the 33 million. Oh, fair enough. So we went to BNM and they've got them for 13, 14 Okay, excellent. So, so not too bad. So you can actually do this uh, if you're running on, uh, most families are running on quite tight budgets, but I think you don't have to spend a fortune to get going. No. And I think, what would you say you've spent in terms of building up a five rack system? What's the cost to you as a family, would you including say? Including the two that we've just done, because obviously we've done the extra two. So including that, I'll probably say about 120. So what would you say? I'd say more 150 to 175 yeah. so due one, to wood and tub cost. So let's say 150 to 175, yeah. and that covers seven snakes. That's 20 pounds per snake. Mm. I mean, that's pretty good. Yeah. And if you look at what we've got here, when we've gone for uh, the um, Herb Exotics ones, uh, a rack of 10 would cost you a grand, so you're looking at 100 quid each for those. So 100 pounds each for those, as opposed to 20 if you build yourself. So in theory, if you want to get into breeding for the first time on a reasonably tight budget, build yourself to start with, prove, prove concept before you put any more money in, because let's see how you get on first. And this is what Jad and I did, is we wanted to just commit ourselves to a little bit of money to start with, see whether we can get the science right, because what this hobby is about is science and art coming together. There's 300 different genetics out there at least, if not mm. more, and then you've got to learn how to look after the humidity, temps and everything else, get the science right, but then your artistic flair comes in because you want to breed different snakes to create different morphs, and that's where the beauty of the hobby comes in. Okay. Now the other thing that you guys keep, now Luca, you are very, you've got a pet, haven't you, a pet tarantula, and what's the name of your pet tarantula? It is, has it got a name? She hasn't got a name yet. She hasn't got a name yet, so you're going to give her a name? Yeah? 
have you got a picture of her? Can you show, it, show us a picture? Because I think, let's have a little look and see if we've got a picture of their tarantula. And uh, do you handle the tarantula, Luca, yourself? Have you? It handles the small ones. The small ones, yeah, that's lovely. So what we'll do is on another series, we'll bring this tarantula to the show. And uh, perhaps, Mum, Amy, you, you can uh, handle it for us and show us uh, your beautiful tarantula. That would be lovely. Wonderful. And you got a picture of Cornelius there? I do. So Cornelius is their first snake they've taken from us. And what would you say, how is he settling in? Oh, he's fine. As I said, uh, you know, I was doing the washing up the other night. And yep. he was around my neck just chilling while I was doing the washing up. And Have I'd you taught him to do the dishes yet? No, not yet. <laughs> Although he was giving it a good sniff. <laughs> he was trying to get his tongue out there, you know. He was trying to clean the plates off for me. Yeah, what I do is get him to clean the plates and then uh, Luca can do the drying. You can, you can dry and the snake can do the washing up with his tongue. How about that, Luca? Is that a good idea? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, they say that I've got a, a child's sense of humour, so... <laughs> Fit right in. <laughs> I, think, I think Luca appreciates my sense of humour, no one else does anyway. <laughs> well, we've got a Pikachu clutch. Now, without further ado, we're going to come back to this topic in a second. Uh, but we've got a clutch pipping. Now, when we organised this last week, I didn't expect this clutch to be pipping, but clutch number 11 is pipping, and this is one which we're really excited about because we're calling this the Pikachu clutch. And why are we calling it the Pikachu clutch? Because the eggs have got a touch of yellow in them. And that's what we're hoping for because we've got Bruce, who's at an albino heck pipe. We put to Mo, Jared's first ever snake that he made five years ago. So now this is a, a beautiful opportunity. Now she proved out to be 66% heck pied. We want to know if she's 100%. And this, is, this clutch will tell us if she's 100% heck yeah. for pied and she's 50% het for albino. If there's an albino in here, it will tell us that she's 100% het. Yeah. So this is a 50% chance that she could be a het. So when you breed them, you can find out whether they're 100% or zero, mm -hmm. okay? So let's have a little look and see what we've got here. Now, I will show you the parents later, but Luca, should we see if there's a Pikachu in here? Let's have a little look. So they were pipping last night. I unfortunately was, um, wanting to see whether she was albino so when I saw this one that had already pipped I couldn't see what colour it was so I opened it up and lo and behold look what we've got in there we've got an albino now Adam you can zoom in on that one so we've mm -hmm. got a Pikachu in our egg here let's pull it out and see what we've got there you go Lucas do you want to see his head there is it Pika Pika Pikachu is he beautiful? He's got red eyes. Look at that. Can you see his red eyes? Yeah. So that's called an albino. Okay. And they are beautiful. And this is one of the first um, genes that we've ever found in the wild because they obviously stuck out like a sore thumb. So when they were looking for uh, snakes in the wild, they were really surprised to see an albino. And I think the albino was found on, on another boa before they were found on the bull pythons. So when they realised that the albino is not just in one particular variety, they realised that there could be other albinos in other varieties yeah. and therefore somebody was uh, asked to see if they could source an albino and they did find uh, a visual albino in the wild. So one of the first ever recessive genetics ever found. So the good news is that Mo is a 100% het for albino because if you don't get an albino, not to say that she wouldn't be, the fact that we got one proves that she's 100%. So Jad will be delighted. Now, are there any pides in here? Now, let's have a look and see if we've got any pides. Now, this one here looks like mother. If you look at this one here, this is just like mummy. It will be probably 50% het for pied, and it will be 33, well, we know she's 100% het for albino now, so it will be 50% het for albino. Although the dad is an albino, which means it's 100% actually, because the dad's an albino. So everything is 100% het for albino because the father carries that gene. Yeah. And the fact that the mother carries it, two <coughs> out of the four should have been albino, but we only got one. Yeah. But I haven't actually opened up the other one yet. So if we were to open this one up, there might be a pied in here, which would then prove that she's a pied. But there may not be as well. So she may not be a pied, but she does have the tracks on her. Because you can see with a pied, they have tracks on their belly and also they have ringers and when they have a ringer and tracks normally it means that they're carrying the pied gene but not not necessarily though so we thought that she's pied so we thought that 
the albino boy is 100% pied, mm. and she, if she's 100% pie, uh, het for pied, there's a one in four chance that we hit a pied. But we've only got four eggs, so if we had eight eggs, we may have seen a pied. So it doesn't mean to say that if this isn't a pied, she's not pied. We have to breed her next year to see whether we can hit a pied, or even an albino pied, which would be even fantastic. Because the albino pieds were Jared's first uh, ever project he wanted to get into. That's why he got the snakes in the first place. So we're going to help here. Now, what I do is I follow the line of the snakes cut. So you can see that there's no veins here. So these are, even though they're four or five days early, I think I've had a spike on my incubator that's accelerated the incubation mm -hmm. process. It normally takes 60 days, but this is 54, 55 days, and, there's, and they came out by themselves. So that tells me that I've probably got too high a temperature going on in that incubator because the danger of having too high a temperature is that you can lead to kinking and deformities. So it's best to be under rather than over. So I'd come in normally about 89 is the perfect incubation temperature, but it's okay to be at 87 or 88 because if you get a heat spike outside, it can lift all the heat in here and yeah. it can lift the heat. So even though your thermostat's set, the weather has an impact and the ambient temperature has an impact. So what I'd say is always go two or three degrees under and then if you get a spike, it doesn't become a critical spike where you lose the snake or there's deformities. Yeah. So it builds in a little bit of slack <coughs> in your breeding process. Uh, a lot of breeders who are very lacking in patience, they might try to accelerate by going high temps, but they might have deformity issues. Mm -hmm. Best to be patient in all things, because it eventually means a couple of days is nothing really. So let's have a look and see what we've got here. I don't think we've got a pied here. So we're going to just have a little snip, open the flap and see what we've got. And there you can see, we've got three that look like mother. They are carrying 100% het for albino and they are carrying possibly 66% het for pied. So they're still valuable animals because they're carrying those hidden genes. But the banger of the clutch would be the visual albino. I sent Jared a picture of that and he was delighted because it says first girl. So we will keep Mo as a future project and we'll put uh, Bruce to her again next year to see whether we can get the pied. Hopefully she'll give us eight eggs instead of four. But I would say that's a successful clutch. And then what we do is we let them come out of their eggs. And the reason why we don't take them out of the eggs, have you ever wondered why we don't take them out of the eggs? I think it's because of the yolk, isn't it? Because they are still connected to their, um, uh, the, uh, the yolk and the egg sac inside them, and they absorb nutrients. So the idea is they will come out after they've absorbed everything they can from the egg, mm. egg sac. And you'll see there's a big egg sac connected to the umbilical. And if you start taking them out of the egg too early, they can have serious problems because yeah. they, they've been disturbed. They need to be, you don't want to, you know, you don't want any infection getting into that egg, egg sac. You want that egg sac to be left as they are. Yeah. They'll come out when they're ready and, they, and they'll drop their own umbilical off. And then you'll see it drop off. And when they get to that point, we then put them into a tub, which is being prepared earlier, a shedding tub. And in that shedding tub, it's got high humidity, quite damp, but it allows them to shed and allows them to feel comfortable with high, humi high humidity. So, Amy, if you'd like to put those back for me, we put them back in the incubation for a couple of days, if you can open the door. So there's the first one. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to now look at the five snakes there. This family, Adam, you're going to choose your five snakes mm -hmm. from my shortlist that I've got here. And I'll get the shortlist and then we'll have a look at the animals and then you can decide which ones you'd like yeah, okay that's fine yeah <laughs> let me let me give you a hand <laughs> so right, is this new uh this is our first incubator that we had jared got this second hand for 40 pounds so when you want to get your incubator look on the second hand market because you can well, pick them up really cheap it's funny though, or you because, can make them yourself we found a uh, it's like a polystyrene box and it's got a thing in the bottom and it's got a humidifier and a thing at the top of it Fantastic. Well, that could, that could work. And that was 25 quid. 25 so I bought it. Oh, well done. Yeah. No, you're getting yourself well prepared. So, so for 25 pounds, you get yourself an incubator. So when you're starting off, it's proving the concept. You don't want to spend too much money initially. You want to just see whether you can, whether you like it and whether you enjoy it, and do it on a reasonably but low budget to start with. And then later, once you get into it, you can commit more money to it later. Well, they've got one of those on Facebook as well for 40. For 40 quid. Yeah. Well, there you go. These are great by the way. Yeah, if I can get the door open. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let me show you how to do the door, okay? Honestly, so, it just won't like, open. So put your finger there, push that down yeah. with your thumb, and then open it. So you, can you see, you, you have to push the handle down with your thumb there. So go thumb on there and push that down first. 
So push that down. So your thumb. So your Where's thumb. thumb so, 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 look, so if you put your thumb here, you can yeah. push. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, try that. They're now open now. Put it back. Oh. You got it? So yeah. it's basically. I know it sounds silly. I do function as an adult, I promise. It's childproof. <laughs> so, yeah. You'd get it open. <laughs> But Luca will get it open. But now, this you want childproof locks? Don't yeah. Come to so, it'll, it'll test them. So let's go through the five snakes that you're going to go for now. So the first one, which I think you're going to want to go for, is this one here, which is Biscuit. Now, Biscuit is a cinnamon pie girl that's three years old. She's got decent sized follicles. She will probably go for you next season, which means that. Uh, as long as you get your temps right, your humidity right, you don't overhandle her because when you're breeding, you mustn't overhandle snakes. The idea is, yes, by all means, handle them, but when they get into the breeding process, you can disturb them by overhandling. Yeah. So when you get into breeding, you want to be able to let them settle um, down and not handle them too much when they're breeding because it can actually put them off a little bit. So this is Biscuit, and she is a cinnamon pipe girl. So if we bring her out, she's about 16 or 1700 grams so the minimum that we start breeding is at 1500 so she's good to go we could weigh her but i would say that she's not far off 2000 grams actually or two 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 kilograms so there she is um she hasn't been handled much so she is a little bit nervous but you're socializer and i think the time to socialize her would be probably now before you start locking yeah get her socialized if you like um, but then, do you want to have a little handle of her? To be fair, she does seem pretty chill though. She is. She used to be very striking. The reason why she's grown so well is because she loves her food. And she oh, might be carrying pastel. Look with him. Yeah, she might be carrying pastel as well. We're not 100% certain. So there could be something else in her. And there might even be yellow belly because one of her <laughs> other siblings, if you look carefully, can you see the patterns here? You've got this jaggedness. Yeah. So there could be yellow belly in there. See the yellow in there? So I think there could be more than cinnamon in this, but until you produce the clutch, you're not going to know for sure. Mm. But you could get some pleasant surprises because if you put canelas to her, you could get pastel or killer, super pastel, yeah. which is the killer, cinnamon, banana, pides, if he proves out, uh, which could also have yellow belly in if she's carrying yellow belly. So you could have a really powerful animal from this. Mm. And also you'll prove out Cornelius because he's 50% het for pied. So if he doesn't, if you don't get any pieds, then you can come back to me, and we can perhaps give you another boy that is het for pied. Yeah. But let's try it, try it first season because yeah. you're gonna. The worst case scenario is you're gonna end up with banana sinnies, which I know you love. Yeah. Which are gonna be 100% het for pied, and they could have yellow belly and they could have pastel in as well. So you're gonna end up with quite a powerful baby or building block for your future. Mm. Okay. So we'll put her back for now, and you can see I give her quite good humidity. So just to help you with humidity, we use this paper and what we do is every morning I pour a third of their water on the hot spot as though it's raining, but I do it over, the, over their hide mm -hmm. so they don't get absolutely soaked. The paper absorbs the water and moisturizer and it creates some really good humidity, yeah. 60 to 70%. And then by the end of the day, it dries out a little bit. So it goes through a similar cycle to it raining yeah. in the morning and the snakes are drying out and then they have another rain in the morning. So I'm creating almost like a tropical forest. Yeah. Yeah. You don't want to, they don't want to be sitting in water, but they do need moisture. Yeah. So the humidity is very important. And the temp is 89, 88 to 89 on the hotspot. Remember I'm allowing two or three degrees of wiggle room in case we get a temperature yeah. spike. And then the cool spot is about 78. They can choose where they want to be, given the gradient. Well, the way we've done the snake wrap, so the heat mats at the far end. Excellent. And it's just like, thingy, but the water's that end. That's fine. So they will use the water bowl. Get a big water bowl like this size. And why do I go for big water bowls, do you think? Because they're laying. They like a jacuzzi. They, they, <laughs> I want Luca to put a diving board so they can go swimming. So the snakes <laughs> can swim in them. And also they bowl wrap. So when they build their eggs, they cool them. They need to, the bigger the bowl, the better the follicle development. A lot of breeders make the mistake of giving small bowls. Give them big bowls. The other thing is that the surface area of the water adds the humidity. Not the depth of the water, it's the surface area of the water that creates extra humidity. So instead of you pouring loads of water in all the time, the bowl itself produces humidity. Yeah. When we walked in with 400 snakes, it felt humid. Yeah, I'm, not it putting, was. I'm not putting any humidity in the atmosphere because it killed my facility. I made a mistake. Mm. We no longer have these humidifiers working. We now create the humidity in the tubs 
and they create the humidity in the atmosphere because there's so many water bottles mm. that are, you know, believe you me, you, you felt it. Yeah. yeah. You know, we've opened the door at the moment <laughs> because we wouldn't be able to do this otherwise. So, are you happy to have her? Yeah. Yeah? Well, there we go. So, you, Luca, you've got the biscuit now. Okay. So, now, the next one I want you to look at is another girl which is called Jupiter. Now, Jupiter is a butterhead clown girl. She's one of my original females. She's given us a clutch and one of her babies is behind you, which is, this is what she can produce. Lucky is called Lucky because she's a visual clown girl. She's one of Jupiter's babies. And she's called Lucky because she's got a horseshoe on her head. Do you want to see the horseshoe? See the horseshoe on her head? Yeah. And it's turned upwards like a lucky symbol. So Luffy, come and have a look. Now, because we've got a visual clown, we didn't need the hep clown anymore, so we wanted to put that Can on the short it? list. Yeah. yeah. So that is lucky. So if we go to Jupiter, she is butter, which is very similar to lesser. And she's over here. So come and have a look at Jupiter. She's three kilograms. She's a big girl. <laughs> she had 25 millimeter follicles last time I checked her but I didn't put a boy to her. Now, she could still produce a clutch without a boy going to yeah. her, because once they've had sperm in them before, they can hold up that sperm for up to 18 months to 24 months, and they can release sperm from a previous locking. So, you could get bubbles. Well, the only one that finds that fascinating, like the fact that they can retain it. Yeah, also they, there's another technique where a female, if she can't find a boy in the, in the wilderness, she can produce her own uh, genetics and produce her own clutch with her own genetics and that's called, uh, I think there's a special term for it but I um, can't remember the name of the term now but they can produce their own eggs without a male that's how clever these animals are Yeah. so let's have a look okay. at Jupiter so here we go now she's got a massive hide and she's got a massive water bowl she loves that and even though the hide looks big in relation to the rub Believe you me, they do like to live in small spaces and they'll come out and explore around it. But they often have that over their water bowl. So this is how pretty this girl is. There she is. So she's carrying the, the butter or the lesser gene. The reason it's called butter is because all of these little blocks look like blocks of butter. Yeah. And you can see the yellows coming up and the fade. Yeah, she's having an afternoon nap at the moment. <laughs> so she would be an excellent female to produce your first butter clowns yeah and you'd have to then have a boy which I've got I could recommend that's also got the clown gene in him and you'd pair the het clown to the het clown mm -hmm. and if you have eight eggs two of them will be visual clowns so that's your way of getting your clown yeah on a reasonably low budget for some yeah because you've got het to het okay you've got to produce eight eggs she's probably gonna produce 12 eggs she's such an established girl yeah. you can end up with three clowns you know out of that yeah and you can end up if you go for the boy that I'm gonna recommend a banana butter uh, clown, which will be a very pretty snake. Yeah. So, but it's your call. Good afternoon. You've got, you've got so many choices here. I'm going to give you, but you can decide what you'd like to start to start off with. Okay. Then I've got two other girls that you can choose from. This one is called Harmonia. Now Harmonia is a baby that we raised ourselves two years ago. She is also big enough to breed and she might be carrying the orange dream gene. We're not 100% certain whether she's got orange dream or not. Okay. She's a possible orange dream, but she's a pastel and she is percentage wise, let's have a look at the percentage. I think she is, uh, Harmonia is 50% hetphapied and she's a possible orange dream, but she's a pastel. Okay. So she, she proves out to be a pie, you've got yourself a Potentially a pastel pied genetic with yeah. possibly orange dream going in as well. And again, you could use Cornelius and you could put the banana into there. Yeah, because he Cause might he's, have orange dream as well. He might, could maybe. have the orange dream. You could have a super orange dream if he is. But let's have a look at her and you can see what you've got here. So again, she's about 16, 1700 grams. By September, October, when you start breeding, you'll be yeah. able to get her up to 2.2 to 2.3 kilograms. She's going to be big enough and strong enough to sustain a clutch. Mm -hmm. So there you go. There's a second or at least third breeding opportunity there. And then the other girl that I've got here is the mother of Cornelius. Oh, okay. 
called Ariel. Now this is the mother. Now she hasn't been bred for she hasn't been bred for two years. Okay. So you'd have to build her up a little bit more. She is about 1500 grams but she is a beautiful example of a pastel and like you say she is carrying the um, het pie gene in her as well yeah so that gives you another option so there's your uh, one two there's four girls here uh, I know you've got space for five animals haven't you yeah or have uh, you got space for six six, six. Oh. five including because I've Cornelius is already one have you got enough for seven snakes no, uh, five. We'd have to build up the bottom one. Have you got a five and a two? Or yeah, you got a five? five and a two. So well, you got five and a two. Well, technically, we could use the bottom one as well. Um, the only thing is that one's slightly bigger, so all we need to do is just put a little bit of wood in the bottom so that it brings the tub up a little bit. Okay, more. because what you've got here, there are four girls that you could take, or you could take three out of the four. Yeah. And there is another boy that you could take. Okay. So, let me show you the boys because we've only got three minutes left on the video. So, this is the boy that I was going to recommend Turbo. Okay. Now he is such a pretty snake and he will produce some amazing animals. Just look at the spider web on him and look oh, at yeah, the head stamp. Head, yeah. But he's such a docile snake, he's so friendly. Yeah. But he has the pet clown in him as well, so you could produce banana spider clowns. Yeah. If you put them to the butter girl, you get butter in there as well. So you've got the chance of producing some fantastic looking clowns. Yeah. And I might buy one off you <laughs> if you do, because honestly it's it's a beautiful project. Um, the only thing with the spider gene that you need to be aware of is you can't put spider to spider because it's a lethal combination and there are some other lethal combinations that I'll explain on another video with more time to avoid just in case you, yeah. don't, you don't want any fatalities but he would prove to be, he's about two and a half years old but he's producing sperm and he would probably lock very well so there's another option there for you, okay? Um, So, are there any questions or anything you'd like to ask me in the last couple of minutes? I'm just going to need help with the breeding part of it because I've never done it before, so it's just going to have to be a step-by-step -step thing, I think. <laughs> well, that leads us beautifully into next week's video, which is if we do a weekly video. Mm -hmm. um, I will then explain to you the process of breeding. So I think the first thing is let's get these animals settled in, get them, yeah. you're happy, they're feeding well and then we'll go on to the next stage, which is what do we think about as we prepare for the breeding season? Yeah. How do we build them up? How do we prepare them? So, Amy, thank you so much for joining the channel. And Luca, thank you so much for joining us. And Adam, thank you for being our cameraman today. Thank you very much. Very much appreciated. <laughs> so it's goodbye from Luca. Good wave. Hi. And it's goodbye from Amy. Goodbye from Paul. And goodbye from Adam. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit that subscription button and join us on this beautiful journey uh, helping this family on their breeding hobby and we'll see you next week. Bye bye for now.